Hi friends, my name is Kalpesh and welcome to my YouTube channel Automotive Crux. In context with my previous video, Hot Design Anti Squat and Anti Food Suspension Geometry Part 1, I am back with the Part 2 under the same title. In this video, I am going to explain how one can achieve the anti squat and anti peach suspension geometry. To understand the anti peach geometry, we need to understand the peach word first. So, considering the vehicle's fixed coordinate system, the moment generated about the lateral axis is known as a pitch moment. While vehicle is accelerating, the rear suspension experiences the power squat or you can say compressive forces as we have seen in my previous video. The front suspension at an instance experiences and tensile forces and expands to counteract the compressive forces generated at rear. The moment of vehicle body due to front spring expansion and rear spring compression is known as the pitching moment for the vehicle. In my previous video we have seen up to this. We have concluded with the statement that as the arm is rigidly fastened to the axle, it has the ability to transmit the vertical force to the sprung mass which can be designated to counteract the squat. In my previous video, we have derived one expression which is vertical, which is the ratio of vertical reaction to the tractive force Fz divided by Fx, it is equal to E by D. And I have promised you guys that we are going to estimate this ratio E by D in the next video. So in this video we are going to estimate the ratio of this distances E by D. To understand the effect of this ratio we consider the simple figure here. The trailing arms are now replaced with the help of this solid rigid trailing arm which is connected to the rear axle. And as the arm is rigidly fastened, we can consider that so we can consider that it has the ability to transmit the vertical force to the sprung mass. So here we need to consider both mass. This WRS it indicates the rear load in the static position. So static rear load. And this delta WR it indicates the weight transferred occurs due to the acceleration condition. As the weight transfer occurs towards the weight transfers towards the rear side, that's why we have considered the plus sign here. This apex it indicates the tractive force or you can consider it as a drive force and due to the vertical loading condition this is the reaction which is produced in the opposite direction. So static reaction and the dynamic reaction. By applying the Newton's second law for the torque around a pivot point A, here is the pivot point A. So considering the equilibrium condition and by applying the Newton's second law, the torque around the pivot point A must we can consider must be a zero. The moment about point A must be zero. Considering the all forces WRS into D plus W by G into H divided by L A X into distance D minus W R S into D minus delta W R into D minus F X into E. For the simplicity in this analysis, the rear axle weight will be neglected and counterclockwise torque considered as a positive. So that's why this two terms they are positive and the forces which are generating the clockwise moment they are considering the negative with respect to the point A. This is the same equation that we have derived in the previous slide. In this equation we can observe that WRS into D and this WRS into D we have a plus and minus terms. So this both terms get cancelled, we are getting the value of weight transfer occurs towards the rear during the accelerating condition. 
that is equals to W by G into H by L AX minus FX into E by D. It is the main cause for the compressive force which try to generate the power squat at the DS suspension. So this load we can consider as the by considering the Hooke's law we can say that this load it is directly proportional to the deflection generated in the spring. So considering the real load we need to consider the rear suspension spring by removing the proportionality symbol we need to add the proportionality constant here kr it indicates the rear spring stiffness so rear suspension spring rate or you can consider the spring stiffness and delta r it indicates the rear suspension deflection positive considering in jams this is for the rear suspension only Likewise, we can consider for the front suspension. In case of a front suspension, this load transfer which is occurred towards the rear, so we need to consider the negative sign here. And the vehicle drive, it is provided rear side. So in this case, there is no term for the drive force. And likewise, we can consider the spring, front suspension spring rate and the spring deflection so we can write delta wf it is equals to minus w by g into h by l ax is to kf into delta L. the pitch angle can be defined as the ratio of sum of the suspension deflection to the fill base the pitch angle which which is indicated by theta p here pitch angle it is the ratio of the sum of the suspension deflection, the sum of the suspension deflection divided by the wheelbase. Here, the deflection in the front suspension is considered negative, considering the jounce and bounce condition in both suspension. By placing the value of delta F and delta R from the previous equation, which is shown here, we can write the equation for theta p here which must be equal to 1 upon capital L into W by G into H by L into AX divided by KR minus 1 upon L FX divided by KR into E by D plus 1 upon L W by G into H by L AX divided by KR having the values for the tractive force in terms of mass times the acceleration. The tractive force value in terms of mass times the acceleration. So we can replace that fx with the help of w by g which indicates the overall mass into acceleration. So the overall term is now transformed into the overall weight and the acceleration terms. Considering 1 upon L w by g into ax as a common term Inside the bracket, we have now 1 upon kr into h by l minus 1 upon kr into e by d plus 1 upon kf into h by l. As I said, this equation it indicates the pitch angle. That means, by solving this term, if we are getting the value of theta p, it is equals to 0. So, to achieve the 0 pitch angle, if the value of e by d, which will be h by l plus h by l to kr divided by kf then only then we are, we are able to achieve the theta p equals to 0 and which becomes a 0 pitch angle 0 pitch angle that means our vehicle will not deflect and it becomes a anti pitch geo battery so this is the advisable but again as i said in the anti spot geometry too the majority of the manufacturers they are not advising to achieve the anti 100% uh, anti pitch geometry so for anti pitch geometry if the value of e by d it will be h by l plus h by l into kr divided by kf the, the first term this term it corresponds to the condition by which anti spot is achieved so from this we can say if e by d it is equals to h by l that means this k term this term kr divided by kf which indicates the spring rate 
if the spring rate is zero, then the rear suspension will not deflect to, during the acceleration. We can only we can achieve this the value of e by d equals to h by l only when this ratio k r divided by k f it becomes zero. That means no spring rate. That means no deflection in the rear suspension. Percentage of squat if the ratio of e by d it is equals to for example we can consider 0.5 into h by l that means interpret like suspension is said to be 50% anti squat here this 0.5 value it becomes 1 we can assume the 1 so here we can consider it's a fully squat geometry if the, that value it becomes 0.5 that means it is a 50% anti squat geometry and in the most of the passenger cars the manufacturers are preferring 20% anti squat geometry just focus on this friends most of the manufacturers for the passenger cars they are preferring 20% anti squat geometry only e by d it is equals to h by l which defines a locus of point extending from the tire contact point this point on the ground to the height of CG over the front axle for example you can consider this is the height of our CG again I will try to explain this ratio the value of E by D it defines a locus of point extending from the tire contact point to the height of the CG over the front axle. The trailing arm pivot point on this line will provide the 100% anti squat. So in the geometry if we are able to achieve this pivot point A on this line then we can achieve the 100% anti squat geometry, anti squat and anti pitch geometry. So full, for full anti pitch condition as I said to achieve the zero pitch angle the E by D ratio must be equal to this term so we are getting the zero spring deflection at the rear side for our considered geometry and if such case happens we can consider approximately twice into H by L so anti pitch is achieved when the trailing arm pivot point is located on the line from the center of tire contact on ground to the CG of the bay. Thank you, thank you guys, thank you for watching my video. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, don't forget to click on the subscribe button and click on the back button so you can get notification every time.